Can you buy a set of high quality tuning pegs for 10 bucks? Let's find out. When I first started building guitars years ago, like a lot of people who are building their first guitars, I wanted to save money. In fact, that was the reason why I started building guitars in the first place. I thought it would be a way to save money. What I didn't realize was that you're putting in an awful lot of time to build the guitar itself. So really, you owe it to yourself to use quality components. However, I hadn't figured that out in the very beginning. So I tried to source components that were low cost in order to keep the overall cost as low as possible. And that meant I was using cheap bridges, tuners, pickups, electronics, and of course, once I made that first guitar, it was actually the first couple of guitars, I began to realize I, I need to step up my game. I need to buy better quality components because I'm putting so much work into cutting, carving, and sanding the parts for the, the body, the neck, and the fretboard that I, I really owe it to myself to use the better quality components. So I started to search for and purchase better quality components. However, even to this day, there are situations where I need to use components that I'm maybe not really familiar with, parts that I've never used before. And in many situations, I, have to, I want to source components that are lower in cost. And the reason for that is because there are many occasions when I am building one-off prototype designs. You know, as a, as a guitar builder, I'm, I'm always thinking of new ideas and new ways to build the instruments that I make, and that can involve some creative solutions. As a result, I have to find components that are going to work with the ideas that I've got for building those guitars. And unfortunately, many of the uh, higher-end brand name components that I'm comfortable with and that I've been using for many years, they don't always make parts that are going to work for those prototypes. So I have to source them from, from other uh, manufacturers and sellers. Now, when I start looking at those components, it's very easy to find the cheap stuff as well as really high-end expensive stuff. But because I'm building a prototype and I'm not 100% sure that it's going to work, I want to make sure that um, I keep my expenditure to a minimum in case something doesn't work. I'm not out a lot of money. And my thinking is, you know, if I build a guitar and it works the way I had hoped it would work, I can either swap out those cheap components for better quality components, which isn't always possible because in this industry there are no standards. So uh, you can't always replace cheap quality bridge with a high quality bridge because they don't line up. There's, you know, mounting holes and things like that aren't in the same place. Anyway, uh, what I typically will do though is if the, the prototype works the way I was hoping it would, the next version of that guitar will be equipped with the higher end components. But the reason I bring this up is because I wanted to share with you some of the uh, things that I do when I start shopping for cheaper quality guitar components, because you can get some pretty decent components at pretty decent prices if you know what to look for. And you know, it's a situation where oftentimes you don't know what you're getting until it arrives in the mail and you're either going to be pleasantly surprised or profoundly disappointed. At any rate, there are some things that you can look for to help avoid that and to ensure that you're gonna get a better quality component. And what I would ask you, the viewer, to do as you watch this video and listen to some of my thoughts on the subject is if you have some ideas of your own about shopping for cheap quality components, post it down in the comments section below because it's a way that all of us can learn. So let's jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you some things to think about when shopping for low cost components for your guitar build. I'm gonna be using AliExpress for my example of what to look for. And I'm choosing AliExpress because we're all pretty familiar with this company. They're one of the largest 
internet retailers, uh, sort of like Amazon or eBay. And we also know that with AliExpress, typically you're going to get uh, anywhere from really poor quality merchandise to really high quality merchandise. And you're going to have to deal with some fairly long shipping times. So um, with that, what I've done is I've done a search for a guitar bridge, just as an example. And this is what came up. <laughs> and as you can see with AliExpress, it, it gives you anything that has the word bridge in it. So we get these little stickers and, you know, <laughs> this uh, guitar tuning peg automatic winder <laughs> and just all sorts of anything that's going to have the word bridge in it or have the potential for bridge. You know, that's why there are pickups that are included. But let's say I was looking for a tunematic bridge, a roller tunematic bridge. Uh, there are a number of options that will come up. And one thing you'll find on AliExpress is that sometimes you'll find the same exact bridge being offered by a variety of sellers. What I try to do when it comes to choosing a seller on AliExpress, because remember with AliExpress, AliExpress is the parent company, or it's actually Alibaba, but AliExpress is, there's sort of the, uh, clearinghouse for all these different retailers and all of which or most of which are in China and they have their own little stores and they sell whatever kind of merchandise they want to sell and oftentimes they're just a middleman um, the seller is so when you pick a bridge you place the order the seller contacts the warehouse where the bridge is stored and then the bridge is drop shipped from the warehouse directly to you. Well, you know, or uh, through the whole myriad of carriers that will uh, transport that product from the warehouse eventually to your mailbox or your front doorstep, whichever uh, delivery option they offer or provide. But uh, what I try to do is select sellers that specialize in guitar parts because a lot of these sellers will sell all kinds of different things and they aren't necessarily knowledgeable in the components that they're selling. Also, what I try to do is purchase from the manufacturer. And many times when you're purchasing components, you can find the manufacturer's store on AliExpress. So if there's a particular brand that you're looking for, you can search for that on AliExpress. And oftentimes you'll find that that manufacturer has their own AliExpress store. So you're buying directly from the manufacturer. Otherwise, you're usually buying from another um, third party source. So I think it's always better to try to purchase from the actual manufacturer. So once you have found a couple of different options, you can take a look at their listings in sp uh, specifically. Now, I, there's a couple of listings that I have found here for a Tunematic roller bridges, and this is one of them. This bridge uh, will sell to US customers for $8.70 with $4.05 shipping. What I will look for right off the bat is right up here where the reviews are. Obviously, I want five-star reviews exclusively, 100%. And this one has 100%, but it only has two reviews and there are only eight orders. So right away, that's a red flag. I want way more reviews and I want a lot more orders. Now, typically when you get more and more reviews, the star ratings will go down a little bit, but I want it to be as close to five stars as possible. So this one has me a little bit concerned because there's, a, there's just not enough reviews and orders. But then there's some other things that you can look at too, like when you look at the bridge itself, and this is kind of an interesting bridge. I've never seen one quite like this before. It's a tunematic bridge. It's a roller bridge, which is, you know, it's not uncommon, but it has springs in here. 
And I'm not sure why they would do that. You don't need springs on a tunematic bridge, but there they are. So that kind of concerns me. Uh, for one thing, springs, even when they're compressed, you can kind of see it. Here, I'll open this up in another tab. You can kind of see, no, wait a minute. Here we go. You can kind of see how the springs on this gold one are compressed down. Well, obviously you're not gonna be able to get the full length of travel with this saddle. That's gonna cause intonation problems. So I'm not really too thrilled with this option. And another thing you can look at, first of all, uh, here is where they have the name of the store. It's the King Music Instrument Accessory Store Store. <laughs> and another thing that you know you can consider is how well they can translate Chinese to English or to whatever language you speak. And if there's problems there, that could be a red flag as well. Uh, but what you can also look at is the positive feedback down here. And this one has a positive feedback of 96.8%. 100% would be perfect, but when you start dipping down closer to 95% or below, that's when you really need to be concerned. And 96.8 is not terrible, but it's not great either. And then we have the description, and you can read through this description, and what you're looking for is poor English or, or poor language translation. And that typically means they just don't care. Because <laughs> if they did, they would make the effort to try to uh, describe the product in a way that makes sense to anyone who's going to read it. And oftentimes they don't. And sometimes it can be so bad that y you really don't know for sure what you're getting. Now, as far as like customer reviews, that's another important one. And like I said, I want to have as many reviews as possible. Two reviews is not enough. And the thing about AliExpress is when they make a review, they'll have, they, they, they will count the star ratings as a review, but there's no actual review. This person here from Germany typed top. That's all they wrote. This person here from Italy didn't write any kind of review whatsoever. And to me, a review is comments left by the buyer uh, expressing what they think about the, the quality of the product. And there's nothing here. There's just the star ratings. And that's just not enough. I want more than that. So I won't buy from this, this seller this particular product because the reviews just aren't there. And that leads me to worry that what I'm going to receive in the mail is not going to live up to my expectations. But in a way, I'll have to admit, I kind of knew that when I looked at the photograph and saw the springs. It just makes me wonder, you know, what the, th what the thought process is involved here that they would use springs on it. That just seems really strange to me. Now, another example of a roller bridge here, this one is the Geiker. And I'm not, I know a little bit about Geiker. I've seen their products before and I, and I think I may have purchased one in the past. But this is an interesting example here. This bridge is listed at $5.28 with $5.51 shipping. So $10.79 for the bridge. And what I'm seeing here is kind of intriguing. It, it locks to the post, sort of like a Tome Pros bridge, but at much, much cheaper cost. I mean, this is re really, really inexpensive. And when you look at the star ratings, it's a 4.8 from 76 reviews. That's pretty good. It's a lot of reviews for a product like this, and it's getting pretty high star ratings and if you look at them how it drills down most are five stars with some at four uh, a little less for three one percent at two and then there are no one star reviews that's pretty good 207 orders 
That's also pretty good for a product like this. So as you can see, this is going to be potentially a much better deal than that other bridge that I just showed you with the springs. And it's coming from this company, Geiker. And it's from Geiker's own AliExpress store. So that's better. Also, look at the positive feedback, 98.4%. That's pretty good. I would feel very confident in purchasing this. Now, of course, it's going to take uh, from today exactly one month to get here. If I'm not in a hurry, that's fine. If I'm in a big hurry, that might be an issue. But it's looking like this could be a pretty good buy here. So I would definitely consider this if I was looking for a roller tunematic bridge especially with that feature of it locking to the post that's that's pretty cool that you don't usually see those kind of features at that price point but like i said the the i think the trade-off here is the long shipping time so you just have to consider that before i continue with this video i wanted to remind you to like comment and share this video as a way to support my channel if you would like to do more you can either click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you choose or you can visit my youtube store which is displayed below the description for this video oh and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future guitar building videos what it comes down to is you've got to do some research and it doesn't matter whether you're going to be buying from AliExpress or Amazon or eBay, Banggood, TomTop. There's a host of these different kind of uh, retailer sites. You have to do some research. Now, of course, I, it, that's easy for me to say. However, from where you're sitting, you're probably wondering, well, what the heck am I researching? And, you know, aside from the the star ratings and the reviews and the number of orders and uh, positive feedback, that sort of thing. You can also try to research the company that manufactured the parts. That's not always easy to do, but you, that's actually one of the first things that I would suggest you do before you do anything else. Try to find the name of the company that manufactured it and then research them. If you can't find a name of a company, that's a red flag. So you might want to keep in mind that if, if there's no manufacturer's name, there's probably a reason for that. But like in this case of this roller bridge, it's a Geiger. And then what I can do is do some research to find out, well, who the heck is Geiger, which I have done. And this is their website. And as you can see, they sell a wide variety of these different components. And what's really interesting about this particular bridge is the fact that they have branded it with their logo. So either they're manufacturing this part themselves or they have a very good relationship with the company that's manufacturing the parts exclusively for them. That's a good sign. So. I'm much more confident purchasing components from these guys if I'm looking to save money or I'm building a prototype than I would be from some of the other components that are available on AliExpress, eBay, Amazon, etc. that are really cheap but don't necessarily have a brand name associated with them. So, you know, Geiger may not be like Hipshot or... Um, you know, Schaller or some of those other companies, but it does seem to be somewhat legitimate enough to where I would be willing to part with the $5.28 plus $5.51 to purchase this bridge. I'm saving an, a, a, an incredible amount of money. And if it, if it turned out to be of a quality that wasn't satisfactory, I'm not out that much. But I'm pretty confident based on the stars, uh, star reviews and um, the reviews left by customers that it's going to be a pretty good buy. Now, when it comes to reviews, another thing I should mention, I, I try to find reviews that have 
a good amount of detail in the review. Um, there are typically going to be two kind of reviewers, the people who are really happy with the product and the people who are really upset with the product. Those two camps are going to leave the most detailed reviews because if you're really happy, you want to share how happy you are with it and what you liked about it. If you hated the product for some reason, you're going to want to make sure you detail out all the reasons why so that nobody else will make that same mistake. And because you're really angry at the company for ripping you off. Well, you know, here you get three stars, mediocre, um, and it has a lot of detail in here about what they found with the bridge. And in, in this particular one, it says this has damaged the screw, as you can see in the attached photo. So they include a photo and yeah, there's a damaged screw in there. So what you have to do is you also have to take the reviews with a grain of salt. You don't know who these people are. Are they experienced luthiers or is it some kid who's just cobbling together some cheap parts for a, uh, parts caster. You just don't know that. So you, you have to read it and be careful about what they are saying about the part. Uh, I know from experience that people will buy components and um, they'll mess them up just trying to install them. So, you know, you've got to be aware of that possibility and think about your experience with similar parts. But it's always nice to have uh, reviews that also include photos so that you can get an idea of how the product is going to be packaged and shipped to you so there are no surprises and as you can see there's a lot of pretty happy customers with this product so that's one of the things that um, i will look for you know when it comes to uh, assessing the reviews of a component so in conclusion, I think you can see there is the possibility that you can purchase fairly decent quality guitar components for cheap prices on sites like AliExpress, eBay, Amazon, Banggood, TomTop, etc., etc. You just got to know what to look for. You want to pay attention to the star ratings, the number of reviews, the number of orders. Um, you want to read some of those reviews, look for details, and consider whether the reviewer is experienced or not. Um, the photos, of course, are important. Uh, but you want to try to purchase from the manufacturer directly because they oftentimes will have their own stores on those sites. And if you can't purchase from the manufacturer, that's a possible red flag. But you can at the very least uh, research the seller and find out, you know, you can look at that, that um, positive uh, feedback score and see where it stands. And um, you want to try to purchase from stores that specialize in guitar components instead of guitar parts, motorcycle parts, um, fashion accessories, etc. You want to make sure that their their focus is on guitar parts and, and uh, that sort of thing. So I hope you found this video to be useful. If you've got ideas on ways to save money shopping for components for guitar building projects, be sure to leave them down in the comments below and spark that discussion. And you know, perhaps down the road I'll do a follow-up to include more tips on how you can save money on components without getting ripped off. So until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.